All right, so we're making great progress. The next thing we need to focus on is the animation uh, and uh, the events surrounding the countdown of the progress bar. What happens when we get all the way to the end of the countdown? Uh, we might we need to, um, uh, to to fire off an event that we can handle and then decide what to do. And there's really two scenarios where we need to worry about countdown. First is whenever we're cooling off, there's a cooling off period waiting for the next round to start, and then there's the next round itself that's actually ongoing, and we are waiting, uh, we're playing the music and we're counting down to determine the value or the score uh, for the player if he makes a selection at a given moment in time. Okay, so to get the animation to work, I'm going to have to add a storyboard. I'm going to add a storyboard to the page's resources. So let's get started with that. We didn't talk about storyboards and animations. I only briefly described what they were. You'll get a little bit more of an insight into what they are and keyframes and uh, actions that happen at certain moments in time during the playback of that animation. So uh, hopefully you'll get the hang of it here as we get started. So like I said, the first thing that we're going to do is actually um, add a page.resources section to our app. And I'm going to create a storyboard. And storyboard, uh, let's give it a name. And you can see it doesn't have a name, but I'm going to give it use the X colon uh, from this namespace here, and that'll allow me to attach a name to a storyboard. And I'm just going to call it the Countdown Storyboard Countdown, and because we're going to need to access it programmatically, so that's why I want to give it a name. And then uh, I'm also going to handle the completed event, so I'll go ahead and add a completed. We'll come back to that later. Now, there's different types of animations that I can add. In this particular case, I want a double animation using keyframes. And so a double is the data type. I want it to go uh, to have values that are numeric. And um, using keyframes allows me to uh, identify key moments uh, in the life of the animation where I change key values of given properties. All right, so hopefully that will make enough sense to at least get started with it. And we're going to have to give a few important pieces of information. Um, for example, the storyboard dot target name. This is what we want to affect. And I think I call this my progress bar. So that's what this animation will deal with. And then um, the property of that storyboard. So target property equals. And um, this we're going to just have to kind of follow this. Uh, essentially what I want to do is set the, the value. And it's a... Um, so typically with a progress bar, you know, you have a maximum minimum. So I think that's pretty much what that's denoting. Um, it's just using a, a base class called range. And then there's one other property I need to set. It's called enable dependent animation. And I'm going to set that uh, to true. Okay. And now what I want to do is actually add a number of keyframes. So I'm going to add a discrete double keyframe. And the key time will be, in this first case, at zero seconds. I want the value of my uh, progress bar to be 100. Okay. And then I'm going to copy this like 10 times. Copy and paste. All right. I'll come back to that in just a moment. And so at 001, actually, let me get rid of all this. <laughs> all right, at 001, I want the value to still be 100. At 002, I want the value to be 90. All right, hopefully you can see the pattern emerging. Uh, and so now I'm just going to copy and paste a bunch of these. So at uh, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 5 seconds, 8, 9, and then at 10 seconds, and we'll just keep counting down the values, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10. Okay. All right. 
And so back here in the main page, that's ML.cs. I'm gonna I'm gonna create a, a helper method. Um, so we'll start the cooldown and basically um, my progress bar dot. Uh, actually, I can just call countdown dot begin, right? And so. Here, let's do this. Whenever we uh, load up and finish there, we'll just call start cooldown. Let's see how this works. Yep, and there we go. You can see how we're starting the cooldown. So we'll deliver a message, something like getting ready for round one, round two, round three. Now, at this point, we fired off. When we get to the end, we get to the uh, the countdown completed okay so we got to figure out what we want to do there and like I said there's two scenarios there's one where music is actually playing and then there's another scenario where there's no music playing uh, so I'm gonna actually keep track of the current state of the app by um, creating a playing music uh, boolean and I'm gonna initialize its value to false and this will allow us to determine the current state of the app once we hit the countdown. So here, if if we're not playing music, so if exclamation mark not playing music, then what we need to do is um, start playing some music. And uh, then we'll do kind of the opposite to start countdown. So the cooldown is different than the countdown. The, the countdown will be where you're actually playing music and we're waiting for user input um, to determine what the correct song is. So let's call this start count down. Okay. Here we're going to set playing music equal to true. And then I'm also going to change the um, color of the um, the progress bar to red so I'm getting ready for that here so my progress bar dot foreground equals uh, brush then in the instruction text block I want to say go it's time to to listen whoops listen to the music and I'm also going to set the uh, the foreground equal to that same red color there and then I'm going to call countdown and begin again like that. and so in the cooldown we kind of want to do the exact opposite so in the start cooldown we're going to set uh, playing music equal to false and um, here actually let me grab a several things here will be blue instead of red and then in the instruction text block equals text we want to do a string format get ready for round and then I gotta figure out what round it is so here's another place where I'm gonna have to keep track of which round we're in let's go ahead and go up here and let's go uh, int round equals zero yeah that seems right okay so then here we're gonna go uh, round plus one because that'll be the next the next round will be round one right and uh, I'm also gonna do instruction text block dot foreground equals brush like that here we're gonna call start And here what I want to do is there's a bunch of things that have to happen like um, we're going to evaluate the user's selection and you know score it and all that kind of stuff and then eventually we're also going to um, uh, we're going to want to start the count um, 
the cooldown again. So start cooldown here. All right, so let's see how this works. Okay, so we're getting ready for round one. All right, and you can see here now we're playing. And ideally, I would make a selection here and it will reset everything. But I'm going to go ahead and let it tick all the way down. Okay, so we're just kind of waiting here. You would get minimal points at this point, even if you selected a true. But by selecting a song, it will start the next round. We just have to increment uh, the round number. So that's one of the things we'll want to do uh, here. It's going to be a round that whoops what I wanted to do was plus plus can we do that yeah great okay uh, so we got the countdown working got the storyboard working we need to select the next song that we want played and that's really going to get kicked off here uh, when the count when the cooldown is completed and this fires and we're not playing music that means we want to start playing music so um, here I want to pick a song so let's do something like this var uh, song equals pick song and we don't have that implemented just yet so let's uh, create a private um, void pick song and actually it's not going to be void it's going to return uh, a song and what we'll need to do is first of all we're, we're going to need to use the random class and um, hmm yes so here's what my thought process is. This is what I would like to do. I would like to have a list of unused songs, songs that we've not touched yet that are st still available on that list of songs we initially picked out. So of all the songs, give me all the songs where the used method or the used property is false. And so we need to add another attribute to song called used. And um, obviously, by default, that would be that would should be false. Uh, but we'll populate that. And now, what we'll want to do is grab the random number equals random dot next. Uh, give me a random number, the number of unused songs dot count, like that. And so then we'll get the random song equals unused songs dot element at random number and so uh, that random song now is currently the selected song so I'm going to set its selected attribute to true I'm going to return that random song like so so we pick the song and now I need to uh, go uh, my media element dot set the source, and I want to set it to um, my song. Now the song class does contain uh, the song file, right? That's of type storage file. And in order to call this set source method, I'm going to need to give it two things. First of all, I'm going to need to give it the stream from the file itself. So I'm basically, I need to open up the file and give it a pipeline into that file. And then I need to give it the content type, the MIME type. And so that's easy enough. I can just use a property called a content type. But the other one, I'm going to have to do actually something a little bit um, nifty here. Song.songfile.all. Dot dot 
open. I want you to open yourself and I need an access mode just for read only. I'm not going to write to you. Um, now, obviously, this is async, so it's awaitable, so I have to do something like that. In fact, let's go ahead and knock that to the next line, put that on the next line, and do that. And so that would make this async. Uh, do I have to even return a task to that? I don't know that I do. I'm not going to this time. Okay. So my media element dot set source. And then I want to start the countdown after I've made that after I've made that pick. Okay. So let's see what happens here. I think we're pretty close here to working working prototype. Okay, we grab all the songs now. Let's get ready for round one. If we're lucky, at the end of round one, the sound will when this goes away, when we get down to the end of the cooldown. Oh, and here we go. Okay. So it mostly worked. <laughs> There's some things that, uh, after the click, I got to figure out, like, did they click on the right song or not? If they didn't, what are we going to do then? Okay. But we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, and actually, I think we're good to go in this video. Uh, we will continue on to the next one where we actually do that evaluation of what the user clicked on and what points do we give them as a result of that. So we'll do that next. Doing great.